So a YouTuber I know who goes by, oh no, it's Alex, made a video talking about how, well, it's titled Starfield 30 FPS lock is terrible for Xbox and for gamers, this is not acceptable. <clears throat> I thought I would watch it and respond to him because he's a coward and won't talk to me. And I thought I would just give my rebuttals uh, here on the stream. So buckle up, everybody. We're going to do an Alex... <laughs> <laughs> We're going to do an Alex video. Let's go. <clears throat> okay, so let's dive right into it. And I'm just going to watch and respond. Video, I kind of want to make this quick statement. I really do believe that Starfield will, in fact, more than likely be a good game. A lot well, great video so far, Alex. I, I agree with all your points. A lot of the RPG mechanics they showed on Sunday look really enticing to someone like myself who likes deep systems and mechanics. It seems as though they've taken some lessons that they've learned from Fallout 4 and 76 and really just reversing those lessons, learning from them and applying something new to something that is actually probably going to be a great set of series of games coming to us in the future. Now, with all of that being said, however, I can't believe this is going to be a hot take warning. I truly feel that Starfield should be 60 frames per second. I will. Alex plays on PC. Alex plays on PC. It will be 60 frames per second. So we're talking just about console here, right? Sh would it be nice if there was an option? Sure. But they've said, hey, look, it's going to be at 30. They got out in front of it. They said, it's not going to be, it's not going to be 60. Phil Spencer saying it's a creative choice. I mean, I feel like that's kind of like a misdirect. What's he going to do? Come out and be like, yeah, the Xbox Series X isn't powerful enough <laughs> to handle it at 60. No, he's not going to say that. But I do think that it seems like Bethesda wants to push graphical fidelity versus frame rate. Now, initially, I would have agreed with Alex's take. I do prefer to play most of my games at 60 frames per second. However, there is one game that kind of broke me out of that. It's Cyberpunk. Cyberpunk 2077, I played it on like a, a stupid machine, 5950X. You know, it had a 3090 at the time, tons of RAM. It was it was a spec that I put together and Power GPU put together. It, it was a monster at the time. And I played the whole game at 60, but... It just didn't run that well, even on a, even on an insane machine like that game still had optimization issues. So when they put it on console initially, it was only for previous gen and ran at 30 and uh, one, well, at least once they got the crashes fixed, it seemed fine, right? Like it was fairly stable on modern consoles somewhat. And uh, as long as there aren't frame rate dri dips, I can see a game like Cyberpunk 2077 or Starfield being 30 and not having a lot of issues. But let's hear from Alex a little bit further. We'll go an even step further than that and say console games today or all games in general should at the very minimum be 60 frames per second as the standard. I don't know. <laughs> I. I think we're actually entering a time where developers have been tired of sacrificing visual fidelity for 60 frames. I got flame for this tweet where I said 60 frames per second is a buzzword. It's not a buzzword. It, it the, the way the tweet was phrased was I was saying it's a buzzword for console fanboys who like to use it to throw around like the frame rate graphs that we all see because the most recent one that I've seen is Final Fantasy 16 getting dunked on because it's performance mode on the demo, at least, which, yeah, it'll get updated or whatever. But the, the performance mode right now is running at like 32 frames per second. So, yeah, you can say that. And games like Returnal that run in 4K, it's not actually running in 4K. Most games are upscaling from 1080p at this point. So... Developers are being forced to make this choice. Well, do we have our game run at what? 720 native, but so it can hit that 60 frames per second target. And they're saying, no, we don't want to present our game at that resolution. So I, th I think not every game needs to be 60 frames per second. It just doesn't. Right. And let's say last of us part three came out. 
and it was 30 frames. I think people would lose it, but I think Sony has like Insomniac on their team and Insomniac has just done magical things with Spider-Man. And there's a lot of great developers out there who have figured out how to make the console hardware hit that 60 frames per second target. But I don't, I don't think it should be blanket for every game. I think the last of us is fine at 30 frames per second. I'm on console. And if you want to play at those higher frame rates, assuming they figure out how to make it for a PC, they start building <laughs> or uh, play it on PC. Like it's, it's almost coming full circle, Alex, where I feel like, or whoever's watching and thinking about this, where I feel like the, the console market is actually sort of resetting, right? PCs are going to be the, the experience where you can push and pull all the parameters that you want and hit the target frame rate and visual fidelity that you want if you know what you're doing. And consoles, you're just going to kind of get what you get. The problem is the marketing. I, I'm going to let Alex continue because I know he gets into this, but the problem is these boxes have been ma marketed with buzzwords, which is the point I was getting at. I didn't make it very well, but buzzwords like 8K on the PlayStation box and capable of up to 4K, 120 frames per second. And console gamers have gotten their taste. They've gotten their first taste of what 120 frames per second look, looks and feels like in Gears of War multiplayer. And once you open Pandora's box with frame rate, like I've been playing Destiny 120 or higher for a long time, it is very noticeable when you go back to those 30 frames per second. That's, it seems like I'm kind of getting into a whole other conversation here. Let's hear from Alex. I understand how this is somehow all of a sudden this massive hot take that I had to say on Twitter the other day and really just people just trying to defend 30 frames per second in the replies. What's he? I would, I don't know why he feels like, I'm sure some people are out there defending it. I don't think that particular genre needs 60 frames per second to be an amazing experience. I think it can still be an amazing experience at 30 frames per second and 60 frames would be nice. And I'm willing to bet that that when the next generation of hardware or whatever comes out, they offer that. It's just it's just not there right now. Even crazier is that people that I truly respect in the industry and I still respect, by the way, are saying 30 FPS is perfectly acceptable in some weird honestly strange capacity. We've had massive upgrades in technology, even though it's only been a few years with these new consoles coming yeah. out. And the fact Agreed. that three years into this console life cycle, we're now hitting a brick wall and going back to 30 frames per second really just goes to show that a couple of things are in play. Either one, these consoles were never as powerful as they were being touted about. Ding, 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 ding. He is right. That part I agree with. The buzzwords on the console are just nonsense. <laughs> How many games run at native 4K? Like what the RE engine I think does it. The Gears games on the Series X are using, I believe, VRS to upscale to 4K and then hit that target, right? There's some really cool technology out there. That is, a, that is allowing some of those older games to hit that target. But he is right on this front. There is a lot of marketing jargon being shoved down everybody's throat. And he's just dead on the money there. I don't know what else to say about it. Which is what I truly think is the issue. Two, a lot of game designers and game developers or even art designers are trying to push the boundary of what games look like either in a more realistic sense or anything else along that nature, or three, the game is... Well, you know what? He's right on two. They are trying to push visuals and, and what they're capable of in the engine, and sometimes they make that choice to sacrifice the frame rate to accomplish that on console. I, I think that one's also correct. Developers have actually come forward and, and said as much honestly horribly optimized and should not even be released at this moment in time i honestly believe it is a okay the optimization one i'm back my son woke up i'm just gonna pick up where i left off and should not even be released at this moment in time i honestly believe it is a combination of all three of those actual factors and uh well i mean bethesda games 
they're just not optimized very well. Even Skyrim, like it has glitches and bugs, but they're sort of fun at the end of the day. Uh, I'll give them the first two, but the third one, I don't know. It's not going to be one specific thing. I really do believe that a lot of game developers and artists are trying to really push what games look like, which is causing us to have games in the hundreds of gigabytes plus in terms of downloading or storage space. Because honestly, those uncompressed textures really do love that storage space. I also believe at the same time, though, that these consoles were never truly going to be eating monsters for breakfast. I mean, let's not. Of course. Like. At some point, game designers are going to say, you know what? I don't want to be constrained to this box anymore. Like, I don't want to be. <laughs> they just made it so that designers had to meet too many different requirements. They had to do 30 lock. They had to do 60 lock. They had to do 120 lock. They have to do native 4K. Like, the expectations just became almost untenable to obtain with the hardware that's in those boxes and like xbox playstation at the end of the day they're quite comparable sure one has a little bit faster of a hard drive but they're close they're close enough um anyway i forget this we don't want to build just another console. We truly want it to be transformative. More immersion, more exploration, <laughs> more detail. I don't know this why. This generation is going to be a bigger leap than any generation we've done before. It's going to usher in resolution and frame rates that we've never seen before. Like, never seen before. We're looking at frame I mean, <laughs> this is good. This... Th He's making a very good point here about the marketing that led up to these console releases, right? And I remember PC gamers being like, frame rates, like 60 frames per second. <laughs> like PC gamers, 60 FPS is kind of the standard on PC, right? Console, I, I don't know how console gamers feel about it. Maybe that'll be the poll for this video. I, I think most console gamers don't know if a game is running in native 4k or not, I think most console gamers don't quite understand why 68 frames per second is different than 30. I mean, I don't know what the market statistics are off the top of my head, but the displays people are using, especially on console often is like not, not like modern displays. So maybe they can do 60, but yeah. Anyway, let's continue on. Frame rates up to 120 frames per second. And even after all of those <laughs> things going into play, I still also. <laughs> That was just a good joke. So firmly believe that game developers and game companies and publishers are still pushing games out the door while they are half baked, incomplete, and totally unoptimized. Star Wars. We've been seeing that lately with so many PC ports that I've been doing, or even in general. Last of Us with games that are releasing at 30 fps on these brand new consoles even three years in these consoles in my opinion are still brand new but enough about what i have to say let's see what todd said in this actual interview with ign it's 4k in the x it's 1440 on the s we do lock it at 30 because yeah. we want that fidelity we want all that stuff we don't want to sacrifice any of it Fortunately, in this one, we've got it running great. It's often running way above that. Sometimes it's 60. But on the consoles, we do lock it because we prefer the consistency. Yeah. Right? We are not even thinking about it. And we're not, we don't ever want to sacrifice that experience that makes our games you know, really, really special. So it um, feels great. We're really happy with how it feels, even in the heat of battle. And we need that headroom. Because, you know, in our games, really anything can happen. And here's where I really have to disagree with a lot of what Todd is saying. In my opinion, there truly is no such thing as a smooth 30 frames per second. And really, this entire concept of things being smooth at 30... I mean, I know what Alice is going to say here. He he's a 60 frames per second gamer, right? But... Again, it comes down to that argument what do most people play at? They probably have internal metrics at this point that still show that a lot of people aren't really utilizing the higher frame rates. So I don't know. 
the FPS truly is insane to me and it shows that people or people that actually are into video games do not understand how frame times or frames per second even actually works. Let's do an example real quick. Right over here, I'm going to show you a picture. This is going to show you how many frames you actually see in every single second during an actual image or whenever anything's moving on screen. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, as you can see, oh. the more frames you have being applied each second, the smoother the image is in fact going to be. This is more True. incredibly important when it comes to video games, not just on a visual sense, but also on an input sense. Now you're thinking to yourself, why does this matter? He's right. For shooters and stuff like that, you have to have 60. I, a lot of people feel like a lot of people put Starfield in the shooter category. And that's sort of the mistake that I made with cyberpunk. I don't feel like any combat encounter needed to be 60, right? I'm all paranoid. My son's going to wake up again. I mean, I guess, I guess it's nice, but if Todd Howard is saying, yeah, we had to put it at 30, I, I get it. Maybe they come up with something later. I have seen some people say, I wish they would have had a unlocked option or something like that, like a, a option to unlock the frame rate. So it's just, it can go as high as it can go when it can go 60. I think that would have been reasonable. I have to imagine they tested it and there were crashes. The only, the only reason I can think why they wouldn't at least have that option, just be like, look, we're going to set it to 30 and then we're going to, have an unlocked option where frame rates can go up to 60 frames per second, but it'll be less stable. I mean, I don't really see the harm in that, I guess. Well, it's very simple, actually. When you lock a game to 30 frames per second, you have a 33.3 millisecond delay between yeah. every single frame. What happens when you 60. double it? Well, now you have a 16.6 yeah. millisecond delay between every single frame. What does that do for you as someone who plays video games? Well, the biggest thing is that it reduces input latency. Input, he's probably gonna explain it, but input latency is the time from when you press a button to an action appears on the screen. This comes into play uh, in a, a very important way for fighting games like Street Fighter, for games like, um, What's another game? Uh, Call of Duty is an important one where you you really need that one-to-one -one action. Fortnite might be one where they even have a low latency option potentially on console. Again, uh, RPG games like the Bethesda games, I don't know that you need that flinch response time to to kill the NPCs. I'm sure you've all experienced it at some point in time when you had to turn your TV into game mode because your TV has a natural input latency of 5, 10, maybe even 15 milliseconds from when you press something to when it actually shows on the screen. Reducing that latency gives you a much better experience. Yeah, a lot of TVs just, you already are dealing with 10 milliseconds of uh, input latency. And then you add, like if, you, if your controller's wireless, that's a few more milliseconds. And then um, it just kind of goes from there. Um, older CRT TVs had a, had a lower latency anyway. over time. Remember, we are here to play video games, not to watch them. 30 FPS and 24 FPS truly don't make any sense when you're trying to have a tactile response to any sort of input you are applying. We've had this same discussion with so many things in the past that really coincide with this. You can even apply this same concept to tick rates in first person shooters or even response times to things like Google Stadia that was really just not having the best experience when you would hit the button and then you would wait a good second and a half for it to actually yeah. respond and make that movement. And input latency is exactly one of the biggest reasons to have more frames in your video game. You want more FPS because the more frames you are seeing, the better chance you have of actually having the Alex right the image he's, at the exact moment in time. You provide in, that action to that actual video game, giving you a better sense of input and reducing any sort of latency you'll have while you're playing the video game. So on a tactile perspective, it's necessary because 30 FPS is far too long of a delay in order to play any video game that even has the remote sense of even trying to have some sort of action inside of it. I mean, saying that it's too much of a delay to play any video game, like you can't play a turn-based RPG 
yeah, you can. Like, there's video games out there that 30 FPS makes sense for. Last of Us, you don't need Twitch responses. Is 60 FPS better? Sure. Todd's come out. They said, we're doing 30. I get that he's upset about it. But to say that, like, it, to say that 30 doesn't work for anything, that's where I don't agree. And I, I think it's fine for Starfield. I think once people get Starfield in their hands, they forget about all this. The same way they forgot about it with Cyberpunk. Because it's not the type of game that, like, has to have 60. And that's my only argument, right? 30 FPS is going to be fine for a game like Starfield. And Starfield is, in fact, a first-person video game that has shooting mechanics. You would want this game to be 60 frames per second. And the crazier part about all of this eh. is that so many console fanboys and people on the Xbox camp are defending 30 frames per second for Starfield. But these same people were the same ones criticizing Redfall for being 30 frames per second. Redfall was marketed that it would be 60. It was marketed as a shooter, right? So yeah, <laughs> I definitely criticized it for not having 60. Uh, it got so bad that they had to like make an announcement that it would not run at 60 FPS at launch. And they were putting like stickers on the boxes. So like Starfield never promised it would be 60. Redfall did. And then they had to go back on their word. So it's a, it's a little bit of a different situation with that product. Because it's a, it's like purely a shooter. It was marketed as a shooter. So, yeah. Second as well. What is the difference? You like Starfield more than you like Redfall personally? Or do you just feel like Starfield may be an actual contender for game of the year and you knew Redfall wasn't going to be, so you chastise that, but you're going to praise Starfield instead? I mean, no, that didn't even... <laughs> I never, like, what? That's kind of a, that's a strange argument. Like, so Alex is saying that people out there, I mean, if people are doing that, that's nuts. You think, you think that Starfield could be a game of the year contender. So it gets a pass for 30 frames per second. I don't think when you're talking about game of the year contenders, frame rate comes into the conversation because the number one front runner that I've played right now is the legend of Zelda. And that thing runs on a tablet, like a, a, super out of date tablet at 30 frames and it probably has frame rate dips. I mean, it's much more stable, but there are frame rate dips in the new legend of Zelda. And that game is just, it's phenomenal, right? It's a Bethesda game. We know what we're going to get for a Bethesda game with Starfield. I played fallout four on my Xbox and it was 30. And then when I played it on PC, it was 60. And like, they're just kind of doing the same MO that they've done with all their games. I'd have to imagine that Skyrim also launched it at uh at 60 or 30 so skyrim launched at 30 because it was like 360 ps3 era and if i remember right a lot of those bethesda games ran like crap on the ps3 i'm kind of going off on a tangent about old bethesda games but it's like hey i will take locked 30 over whatever fallout 4 ended up running at uh even even then i don't think starfield will be locked but I don't know, just it's a Bethesda game, so I, I feel like most people don't care that much. Anyway, continuing on. And some other really ridiculous things that I've seen online lately are trying to compare Zelda Tears of the Kingdom to Starfield. And if saying, <laughs> oh, Tears Zing. of the Kingdom is 30 FPS and dips to 20, but that's okay, but Starfield can't be 30? Well, no, it's not okay on either side. Tears of the Kingdom should in fact be 60 FPS. It doesn't really matter whether it's on a potato, on a tablet, or what have you. When you're playing a video game, it should be 60 frames per second. Uh, I don't know. He's going with, he's going with the whole blanket statement thing again. Every game has to be 60. I mean, clearly for snobs like myself and Alex, <laughs> would that be nice? Yes. Does every game need to be? No, they, it just doesn't. Because you have to think beyond your own experience and say, okay, does every game need to be 60? No, it just doesn't. Because the general population, like most people, 90% of people who play video games don't know anything about 
native 4K resolution or 1080p or whatever, especially on console, 90% of players just want to play good games. And you can accomplish that at 30 frames per second. Now, that 10%, the conversation we're having is about familiar familiarity with these new resolutions and frame rates available to them, because this is the first generation where I've seen people who don't know anything about this topic finally saying, no, I want my games at 60. It's like, okay, but again, I, I just feel like Bethesda is one of those games that does not need, need it. It just doesn't need it. Is that a nice world we could live in where every game could accomplish that and not have any sacrifices made? Sure. But, even the current build of Final Fantasy that's available to everybody, the, the demo build, is can't do it. And Final, Final Fantasy 16 looks to be an amazing game. I still haven't played the demo. I'm going to soon. Well, I'm just going to play the full game, I think, because I'm, like, sold on that one. But I don't care. <laughs> like, oh, no, it, it dips below 60. The game still looks phenomenal. Like, who? I guess Alex cares. I don't care as much about that stuff. I notice it. But I just kind of push through it or whatever. I don't know. The animations look better. The menus function better. The game feels better. And secondly, why would you even try to correlate a handheld tablet that gets, what, 10 watts at most in battery power to an actual $500 box that upon its release was supposed to eat monsters for breakfast and is a 12 teraflop beast? These things don't make any sense. They're not. The marketing, I'll give them this. The marketing is BS. The way they were marketed, yeah. In the same Absolutely. ballpark. You can't sit there and compare these two specific things because one, it doesn't make any sense for a comparison. And two, both games should in fact be 60. I don't understand how this is even like an argument for some people. And you know what? Here's my actual solution to all of this, which I think would be pretty simple to implement, which honestly was given pushback as well for some ridiculous reason. Why don't console games have these same settings options that PC games have? I mean, you literally already have a PC. Don't believe me? You already have an operating system on your console. There you go. You already have to download your games and provide updates. There you go. You have to be connected to the internet. Stability. I, I think the only reason that console games don't have the breadth of options that PC games do is because once people start pushing and pulling those levers on these machines, it increases crash rates and that increases returns of consoles. So I imagine game developers have to pass cert and then they have to function properly on the devices, right? So once they get that locked in, no way they're letting people start push pulling those levers. PC gamers were more used to breaking our games and having them crash or whatever because we did something wrong and we can go into the INI files and, and change whatever we need to change or, you know, adjust our, our uh, uh, DirectX version or whatever it happens to be this generation, you know. Uh, turn ray, tra ray tracing is the big buzzword. Yeah, that's right. I said it. Uh, so, yeah, I think it's the stability. I think it's as simple as that. Surprise, surprise. You literally have a small form factor PC that is made by a specific company. Consoles today do not exist. <laughs> They're not what we had back in the 80s and 90s. You are literally just running a form factor PC like I said before. Why shouldn't you have the options to go ahead and go into advanced settings and say, I don't want motion blur. I don't want chromatic aberration. I want to reduce the frame right here. I want to turn it. They often let you turn off motion blur in games, which does give you more overhead. But it's sort of most motion blur, in my opinion, is often added into games to cover up blemishes. Film grain is another one that I hate. I usually don't like film grain. They're like, oh, it's our artistic choice to go this way. Come on. <laughs> really? I mean, I guess. Like Mass Effect 1 had motion blur and film grain. Guess what? I turned off every time I played through that game. Motion blur and film film grain because it made it harder to play. Mass Effect ran at 30 frames per second. And FSR on, I don't want ray tracing and have the customization yourself. Why is it only relegated to PC? And I can understand the concept. Again, because cert and stability. You you can't you can't have a console and have it crashing all the time 
and market that to people because that's just going to be the story that goes everywhere. So you got to pass cert and sure certain settings can be pushed and pulled on console games, but not all of them. That's, that's uh, what well, I, I don't want to fiddle with is. that. Then you don't have to, but if you're someone that wants that kind of experience and wants to customize what you're trying to build a PC, like, I don't, I don't mean to sound like a snob, but like, seriously, if you want to do all that stuff, you should just make the jump and build a PC. I, I'm working on this article right now where I'm talking to the Twitter community and talking to them about because the min specs for Starfield were released on on um, Steam, and that's probably temporary. So the article will be updated later. But the point being that the min spec to build a m machine that could run Starfield theoretically at 60 frames per second based on the minimum specifications because you can sure you can dip it down to 480p resolution and turn everything off and then yeah you can get your 60 frames per second but it'll it could look kind of bad but anyway the mint spec is about 900 dollars out the door so the idea that what's the xbox right now 500 this 500 hundred dollar console that's now three years into its life cycle uh could handle it I, I just I just don't think it's realistic. Anyway, to play or wants to see if you can get that frame rate to that spot. Why shouldn't you have the option and ability to do so? Just because the options are there doesn't mean you have to use them if you don't want to. You can still keep your console like experience without having to worry about that while everybody else gets to go ahead and customize whatever they want. And honestly, that argument doesn't even I would I like what Alex is talking about. I just I don't see it becoming a reality make any sense you can actually upgrade the ssd and the ps5 for extra storage by literally opening it up and adding an ssd you can install discord onto these consoles and actually use discord while you're playing video games how are these this argument and this moronic take which honestly it truly is moronic of oh i want a console experience that's dead and gone you have a pc experience in a 500 hundred dollar box that's what you have you don't realize and He's right. These are just PCs and boxes, especially the Xbox. The Xbox, like I think Xbox has some version of Windows on it even. Um, I don't know. I don't know what the OS is on, on PlayStation. I imagine Linux or something. Because um, like the Steam Deck is, is Linux based. But he's right. The boxes that we have are PCs. But I do think they're like much more locked down OSs and... I wonder if somebody could put together the specs of the consoles as they are today and show me which games can handle 60 and which can't like, or which games can even run on those spec today, like a PC build of the current Xbox series X priced at 500. Yeah. So the Xbox is sold at a loss, right? So you could probably get away with building a $600 PC build and then would it be able to run Starfield at 60? That would be the question, right? So when Starfield comes out, Alex, go build that $600 machine, install Starfield on it, and let's see what it looks like when it's running at 60 frames per second. And maybe we'll have a little bit more insight into why they said, you know what, we can get it going pretty good at 30, but maybe not 60. Is it? But that's what you're getting at. But again, trying to go back and defending 30 frames per second truly makes no sense whatsoever especially in today's market when you have variable refresh rate tvs and monitors that could in fact adjust to whatever frame rate you want i don't understand this idea that Beth what <laughs> he no i think i know what he's trying like he's not stupid <laughs> but like he knows that the tvs don't just magically make games 60 frames per second using uh very the technologies that he talked about. I, I think he should have made that point a little bit better because yeah, if you get a really good TV, your games run faster. No, you're, you're still bottlenecked by the, the hardware. Bethesda wanted to go ahead and mark 4k 30 4k resolution is truly a meme. It always has been a meme. And in my opinion, ray tracing is also a meme. It honestly requires I absolutely agree with him. I absolutely agree with that. Ray tracing is such bullshit. 
all these games that are like ray tracing and then it's like ray traced audio or ray traced shadows or something. And then like you turn them off and like nobody, nobody cares about ray traced shadows. Come on, Call of Duty. Like um, when you think ray tracing, you think of like the puddle reflections or whatever. Like that's what people really like, the glitz and glam of it. And the Unreal Engine is already looking for ways to do less taxing ray tracing ray tracing was cool technology when it came out a lot of people sort of realized yeah this looks really good but to get it to work well i have to run my game at 30 frames per second like you had to with cyberpunk to do it native native 4k i don't know how many games can do it like i know the re engine can do it but like returnal returnal ran at 60 right what's the native resolution of returnal it's 1080p I, I've done the frame counts. You you can like look at an edge in a game and count the the stairs on it, and then actually get the native resolution in the video games that you play. That's how I do it uh, when I do the performance reviews. And a lot of games are using are getting harder to tell what the native resolution is because they're using new technologies like variable rate shading and just things where like you only render a smaller part of the screen. Like the edges aren't even, they're just like blurred or something. So you can render them in a lower resolution and then you get that frame rate. And then like the coalition's like amazing at that. And then on the other side of the street over at PlayStation, uh, Insomniac just does amazingly well at uh, well at that. But anyway, I, I was responding to Alex. I told him, let's go back. Like, also, a, a meme. It honestly requires far oh, too much horsepower, with power, in my That's opinion, right. to actually right. run effectively. And honestly, Ray why couldn't they just a provide waste. a performance mode? If it's 4K 30, give me 1440p 60. That's upscaled in resolution. The fact that these cons... Starfield won't be native 4K. Like, I don't know that for sure. There's just no freaking way, though. No game is native 4K. Very few games are native 4K. They're just like... Yeah. Consoles can, in fact, and do, in fact, have upscaling like FSR and all these other things that are applied to them really just goes to show they could have. I said variable rate chaining. I think I meant FSR. Well, provided you with that experience, but chose not to. This was their decision to do so. Why are developers telling you how you should play that game? You're the one that bought the video game. And here's what really just bothers me the most about this. I primarily play on PC. In fact, I only play on PC and the thing is just be just real quick on his comment about developers telling you how to play you can build a PC and play it at whatever you want but on console it's just like there's other things to consider I guess like I imagine the cert and the, the crash rate of the game because of cert so I don't think it's about telling you how to play your game it's just because I is. bought I a know. new GPU and a new CPU and all this kind of stuff and GPU prices are still insane by the way they shouldn't cost what they cost doesn't mean that I should be the only kind of person who actually should have that experience of 60 frames per second. You as a consumer and as a console player were convinced by these companies that these boxes are in fact powerful. Let's not forget the SSD, the IO throughput, the crack in technology on both sides the that audio. these consoles were in fact powerful. <laughs> and then turning around that three years later they are completely completely unable to do exactly what they were claiming to do and you are sold a bill of goods well, for it shouldn't be up to you to say that to say they're completely unable to do what they said they were going to do i mean for a few games now i think as it goes on it's going to get worse alex is going to lose his mind like in a year when more games are going to be 30 now because they're going to see they're going to see what happens with final fantasy 16 hey maybe that comes out the retail code and they patch it and they get a stable 60 frames per second but based on dips to 30 in the demo i will be quite impressed if they manage to somehow patch final fantasy 16 for what they're accomplishing on the screen to run at 60 on those consoles i'll be very impressed if they can accomplish that but i think it's going to get worse you to go ahead and get into PC gaming, which you clearly don't want to do, which is why you bought the console in the first place, and then to say, okay, the only way I can actually enjoy the games at the proper frame rate and resolution that I want to play is to spend an exorbitant amount of money because things cost way too much money right now, and then to get into that ecosystem, which I really don't even want to be in in the first place, to play the game the way it's supposed to be played. But then I still have to deal with things like DRM, shader cache loading, frame rate stutters, 
options menus not working properly, all other kinds of garbage that happens in this space. And honestly, it's a bunch of bullshit. It shouldn't be that way. If you're going to be a console developer and manufacturer for a console, your job should be to provide the best experience possible. And 30 FPS... You had me up to up to Telly mentions 30 FPS. The best experience that they can possibly deliver for the console hardware. Like you can't run every I can't run every game on my like even I have a Ryzen 7 3700X right now and I'm starting to realize okay my my CPU is getting outdated. My graphics card can handle whatever so I think I have a 3900 in here. And I'm I'm not saying that to brag. I'm just saying it to say, look, I got a 3700X AMD CPU and I got a 3090 and I'm bottlenecked. So I think that's what's happening with console development. They're just getting bottlenecked by the hardware, right? So so I don't agree with Phil Spencer said it's an artistic choice. Come on. <laughs> like I imagine they would have had to bump the native resolution down to like 720 or something or just make sacrifices that they didn't want to. And when I think about like the best games of all time, like Mass Effect, which ran at 30, uh, yeah, I don't know. That I, That's why I just think that this type of game, any Bethesda game like Skyrim, Fallout, um, Skyrim, <laughs> all, all the Bethesda games, they were 30 and they were great on console is not the best experience possible. We've had three years of this console generation where people were exorbitantly ecstatic. And and the they aged out. About having 60 FPS gameplay and loving it, by the way. Now all of a sudden, we magically just can't do that thing. I smell bullshit. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That's my whole take on this. I really do feel like every single console game should in fact be 60 frames per second. Let me... <laughs> I mean, that's great, Alex, but like, that's not possible. It's just not right. You got to balance what's they put themselves in a bad position. You, you played the clip at the beginning of your video and he's about to wrap it up. But basically it says, OK, <laughs> we've marketed these boxes as 4K. How low can we go with 4K? OK, we can go down to 1080p native. With, with 4K, right, using a, a FSR or VRS or whatever technology you use to get there. But man, we're sometimes hitting 60, but it's pretty unstable. And, you know, Digital Foundry, IGN, and all these places are going to put out these videos just roasting us for not being locked, locked 30 locked, or locked 60 frames per second. Well, let's just put it at 30 and get the most stable experience possible for our customers i think it's weird that he said like oh sometimes it goes up to 60 just listen to feedback and allow people to have it on capped i'll meet you, i'll meet you in the middle on that one give them an on capped let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below are you okay with 30 which pretty much makes unless it causes crashes unless it causes crashes to a degenerate or are you someone like me who wants 60 fps and up a and actually having a good frame, experience frame when you bought that actual 500 hundred dollar plastic box that you cap for on twitter on a daily basis now if you want to see more of these kinds of rants gaming news pc port reviews check out youtube.com slash the desk channel no just kidding I'll, I'll link to alex his pc stuff is pretty good like he knows his shit Al alex does i don't agree with him on this one it has nothing to do with Starfield. Honestly, my, my whole take on this is because of my my experience playing through Cyberpunk. Like some of these games and Cyberpunk visually uh, tried to do a lot. And it was one of the first games where I'm like, look, I want the 60 frames. So I'm going to make sacrifices in the settings and turn on um, and blank DLSS for NVIDIA. And I did it. And got that lock 60, but then you're sacrificing visual fidelity, right? I bet that when Starfield comes out, we find out it runs at like 1440p on most consoles, upscaled, if not 1080 and upscaled. Uh, and we'll see what happens with the frame rate. They would have to like force, ca yeah, well, they'll just, the setting that they'll probably have is just like locked, they probably don't want screen tearing and stuff. So they just locked it at 30. And I think it's as simple as that. And I think this whole thing will be forgotten 
once the game comes out. People will do their analysis videos and that people will just be having fun playing Starfield. Alex will be having fun on PC. I'll be having fun on PC and console. A lot of people will just be playing on console. And, and if the game's good enough, the frame rate kind of the frame rate conversation kind of fades away. He made he made a lot of really good points. Some I don't agree with, some I do. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Hit that subscribe button, hit that bell if you like my content. Thank you so much. I'm still getting over my cold, so thank you for putting up for my was my nasally speech. <laughs> thank you so much to the members. Thank you so much to Alex for making the video so I could joke around with you about it. Uh we should seriously next time you're not going on vacation we should actually i've talked to alex a few times about arguing about bc stuff but anyway hit that join button if you want to become a member thanks so much for watching i'll see you for the next one bye for now everybody.